bolts and so on, but if you're on the other side of it, how much of a negative force can it be if you're not Virtus Pro? Yeah, it's almost like you can feel your energy just being drained from you round by round. Every time you do something bad, the crowd cheers, and <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to really talk about it and fix you fix and adapt in mid-game with that happening. Well, Brazilian fans have hope in 2006 MIBR went all the way to the SWC finals and uh, there is uh, a long legacy of uh, Brazilian teams doing well. But we are in Katowice, Poland and this home crowd are here for Vitus Pro who will start on the CT side. Is that where your money's going? Yeah, and um, honestly it looks like uh, we have Keed going with a B strat right off the bat here, so It'll be interesting if Snacks, and like Jordan said, he likes to play up, up close next to these smokes, and he really uses them to his, his advantage, so he's in a very interesting spot right off the bat. Snacks will open up the shooting. He'll go down first, though, and there's Neo lying in wait. First threat comes out. Knife's going to follow. No. And Neo will be dropped in the end by Bolts as Pasha is quickly over to... Look for the bomb planter, it will be steel on that other side, going for it before Fleur, the man that we've heard a lot about, delivers two headshots, Asher and Bialy both go down, and it is all on Taz to pull Virtus Pro back, and you could hear a pin drop as Keed pick up the pistol round. And that was more than just a pistol round, because something that a lot of folks at home don't know is Virtus Pro and a lot of the European teams, they fear that B bomb site hit. Um, they know once that B bomb site is lost, it's one of the hardest bomb sites in the whole game to retake. So you often see teams like Virtus Pro have two there, or even three there on pistol round, with Pasha having a quick rotate up cat or through back through the kitchen area. Um, you could tell Virtus Pro had three guys there. So by taking that on pistol round, it really gets in the back of Virtus Pro's head and may force rotations later on. We spy bolts making his way towards Taz. Thanks, of course, the man who uh, famously delivered so big on this map at Katowice last year. Does he have something to offer this time around? And here's the standard uh, second round buyout of Virtus Pro. Really does nothing to hurt their economy too much later on in the game. May take an off out of Pasha's hand fourth round if they happen to lose this one. What goes about Neo with the scout? And yeah, Neo, Neo does seem to be picking up sniper rifles a lot more often in Go than I ever recalled him doing in 1.6. Um, he's really controlling the map with, with Pasha. And it's weird because Snacks and Neo kind of switch roles with that as that secondary sniper. Steel is uh, just taking a look down towards people. There are still two players who have barely taken the bait. Now Fallen will lead the push in, looking for vengeance onto Taz for the drop of bolts. Yeah, and, and right now it looks like Keed's in a pretty tough spot right now. They're down a man and also down heavily on HP in this situation. First frag of this entry into A goes to Keed, who will pull us back to a man advantage now as Fallen's Galil does the job. But there is that scout and that headshot as Fur is outed. It's now going to be Pasha coming around. Skill has just four points of health. And Neo will finish off the job. And Virtus Pro will quickly turn around that pistol round. And that round right there is really the story of Neo's tournament thus far. He's really putting Virtus Pro on his back lately in this tournament. He's taking the solo bomb sites, at least from our match. Uh, he's playing that B bomb site on Inferno just terrifically all by himself. Um, literally, they play four a day. Um, and he would do a great job of relaying information and getting the rotations there in time. That round you saw him rotating around with the scout and just putting in work. And Neo always a top, top player, but having a bit of a renaissance at the moment. Form really coming at the right time for him. Yeah. On board with Snacks, who will see action at B for the second time. He fires oh. off and will down steal. Lovely play from the veteran now. Well, this time last year, he was new to these occasions, but he is now a seasoned pro at holding on with Neo in situ as well. Fur will collect and Pasha finishes off Fur. It is just fallen. Who has a hell of a task ahead of him. 2-1 Virtus Pro. Really nice hold there by Snacks and Neo. Snacks jumping, Snacks jumping, getting that information, uh, landing the spam obviously before the hit even happened, which is pretty much a dead giveaway that a B hit's about to happen if you spam a guy in that corner. Um, so yeah, great, great round by Snacks. And if you're on this uh, keyed side, you won the pistol round, you feel like, you know, half the battle is done at that point, but then to lose the subsequent two, what's going through your head? Um, from experience, because that happened yesterday to us, it's very disheartening, but it's something you can get over. Unfortunately, it does a lot of horrible things to your economy later on in this half, because Virtus Pro right now is sitting sitting quite pretty after that round. Thanks again, going to see action at B. And that Neo very quick to join in with that scout, because 
almost clay pigeon shooting, but Snacks will have none of it. Neo has the second frag, and there's Snacks with two more. And it is Fur, who's the last man standing. No more. 3-1 versus Pro. Now, you're not the only American on this stage, though. Peter has stood behind the, uh, the key <laughs> players. What do you think he's offering to them at this moment in time? I think he's li literally just a hype man right now for him, and they love his energy that he brings. He's, he's a good friend with the team, and Peter's always been that hype guy, and just a really awesome guy to be around. He'll brighten your mood no matter what. But yeah, going back to that last round, you saw Snacks take that, that play where he moved behind that back pillar and used that to his advantage, was able to get back up in. Just such a veteran play by him. Pasha pushes out and uh, will be dropped, but it'll be for not as Neo comes in for two of his own. Fur, who has got a hell of a shot on him, picked off as one of those two. And now it's Taz who has to chase out Bolt, trying to make his way in towards that A site. But it's a bit of a sandwich is over on B. Snacks is going to see action momentarily within the shape of steel. Yeah, and you can tell Snacks feels that that's just an A lurker, and he almost knows that there's a guy up in his apartment right now. Right on cue. Yep. And you can tell instantly after he got that kill, he knew he was safe, and he pulled out his knife. That's just his knowledge of the defaults and how, how Mirage works as a map, and particularly at top-level CS. Yali picked off bolts elsewhere and fallen. Here's the last man standing. He isn't standing anymore. Well, a blip on the pistol round, but nothing, uh, no blips since then. Yeah, so, so something to keep in mind right there is that was Kaboom's first attempt at running a default. They had a couple guys go back mid, they had a B lurker and A lurker, and after Neo got those two kills mid, uh, the remaining members of Virtus Pro instantly know there's a guy lurking somewhere by A, they spot him by A halls, there's a guy lurking somewhere by B. He could go underpass, he could go back to the back of mid, and that's how Snacks knew that that was the only guy there. You saw those stats come up from Neo playing above his career KDA at the moment. Uh, here in Kantovic, the raising of game is something I was chatting with Taz before the game. And I asked him, is it pressure or is it a help to have these players, all these fans in front of you? And he said, it's a massive help. Um, so they very much are the sixth man. Yeah, it's crazy. VP really feeds off this energy. It doesn't pressure them or make them feel nervous at all. And um, I mean, I read multiple comments online just about how calm they seem. Even even in the worst situations, when we were up like 8-0 PC Tiger, so they remained calm. So it just goes to show their experience and their just level-headedness as a team. And just kind of seeing all the situations before, they know what's in front of them. Now the one thing that Keith haven't been able to do at all is be able to rush a plant in since that first round. How would you advise them going about that? Um, I really want to see them do that A strategy that I spoke of before, but unfortunately in order to do something like that, you're going to need to probably get middle control. Um, which they did, they did try to do that on first gun round. Unfortunately, they just didn't do a good enough job of clearing middle. Um, maybe send the guy through underpass, take his time a little bit more. Challenging here will be Bialy, and he gets the frag. Crucial, takes out that AWPer and changes the dynamic of this round going forward. And this is just Virtus Pro right now, abusing the map, knowing how Keed likes to play. Something they did against us even was they sent that AWP through the halls like that. And then they would smoke off window, delayed, and it almost pushes your opper, who would be Pasha in this situation, out of the window room and right into that opper's scope, and it's a free kill for him in the halls. Virtus Pro, knowing that Keed likes to do that, double pushes halls on this round after they run their default. I talked to us yesterday about the opening rounds on the uh, CT side Inferno. They were so aggressive, and we're starting to see a little bit of that from Virtus Pro. They, they will not sit back and let you come to them. Yeah, and that's something that I even told my team um, going into the pistol round um, to start the match yesterday is uh, they've always pushed down mid on us, pushed B, and so we really ran a, a methodical Inferno pistol against them where we had lurkers all over the map pretty much, and that's how we took them out. Asha. Equalizes out Fallen's frag. It's a three on three though. Steel has got himself the frag onto Snacks elsewhere and that opens up the B-bomb site, but Bolts with the bomb was nowhere near and he's trying to Usain it over towards that site. Steel will go over towards Pasha now as Fur gets the frag onto Taz and Pasha just draws his gun at the wrong time and that leaves Bialy one on three. He has already got one frag this round, but this is a tall order to recover this site. Big kill right there by Steel, by the way. That was huge. Smoked on one side and without very little vision of the bullets coming at him on the other. Bialy is between a rock and a hard place with just 21 points of health as well. And I almost think Bialy isn't really going for a win here. He's more going for one kill. Um, that third kill on a gun round, uh, particularly when a team, it's their first uh, real gun round, 
after a string of rounds for you. If you kill three that round and then win the, the following round, you know you're forcing another team on an eco. So it's more of an economy situation than him going for that one versus three right there. He just couldn't get that kill. Thus far, Neo leading the scoreboard. A spread of nine on that VP side. But uh, players that are impressing on the key team? Um, right now, honestly, I really liked how Steel just lurked B. Um, I, I, I haven't really been paying attention too much to the individual plays. Fallen opened up quite big at A a couple of rounds. I know that. Um, but I, I always think Steel is great at lurking B on this map. Snacks pushes out and tries to prevent exactly that. <laughs> yep. Commentator's curse. <laughs> Has elsewhere, gets the frag on the fur, and VP still have five men, even if a handful of them don't have any health. And Bolts will see to off to Biali, Pasha down to seven, but Taz has himself that frag on Fallen. Two players left standing for Key, both with full, will uh, lead the charge. Snail's pace charge in towards that A site. Taz has the first, and it is now Bolts one on four. Once he got in this locker, first man is Neo, and he will. Trying to make his way over towards the bomb that's on the floor. Second man is that! So! Oh! No hat trick there. And Pasha, with just seven points of health, one bullet might have done it, was able to shut him down. And that's what I was talking about right there. And now we're seeing uh, Key get in that really bad financial situation. They might be able to force a, force a buy here. It looks like they, a couple of them can buy. Um, but then, yeah, they're going to buy with electing to keep three Tech Nines and two AKs. So this round is really big for the rest of the half of them, because if they lose this, they're looking at an eco round for sure, and then a low buy or another eco round following that. Oh, is that. The optimism that we tried to build for this Brazilian side coming into it, it being their map, just hasn't quite worked out for them on the uh, T side thus far. Asher prowling. Bjarli is there as well in the... Uh, Nades will land in on that A site. The Molotov will just hold them back though as they try to make that entry in towards the site. It's going to be Pasha with Frag on the steal. Biali comes in with number two. Bolts goes down and through the smoke. Pasha is still looking for more. He pokes around the corner, gets himself onto Fur who had dropped Taz, but Fallen will drop the biceps as Biali is uh, ready to avenge and that he does. It is Fallen one versus three. Max ready to put pay to that. Well, and gets himself the track of the deal. That's another one for him before Snacks will prevent any further embarrassment. And Virtus Pro are up 7-2. And that round, you actually saw Keed elect to do the strat that I referred to. That's kind of the bread and butter where they push towards the connector. Virtus Pro read it perfectly, though. You, you actually saw Pasha swing to the ramp before anyone was even up the A ramp. Virtus Pro had three guys there, no one even watching middle. The B rotator always already moving towards the ladder room. They just read them perfectly that round. And... Uh, great rotation by Pasha right there. Now Pasha pushing out, looking to Grenade. take control of that mid area. But there's no one there for him. The, bo the bomb is going over to B. And it's Snacks who will see action once more. And this is what you talked Grenade. about. Snacks' is control on B. What's he doing at this moment in time? How is he mixing it up round after round? Well, he makes it up this round by actually letting Neo op upper B, which is something that Keed probably wouldn't expect because Snacks as the B player, they know he has a Colt and neo has been kind of pushing off Cat a lot and now they're about to run into Neo opping this crack. Neo spots this guy making an early con that he backed off of B. Taz is now aware that he's probably coming underpass. And let's see how Virtus Pro react to this. Taz lying in wait, gets the first frag, it was the bomb carrier but Fallen picks himself, picks him up. Snacks now waiting in line as he and Pasha will pick themselves up two more. And uh, they will look to finish off the job. Bolts, though, will claim one in the middle of that, but VP get away with three men, two of them carrying orcs at the end of that round. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good the Tech-9 is. When there's a guy on cat, guy connector, and a guy window, you're not coming up that connector with four Tech-9s. <laughs> <laughs> look at that crowd. This is Keed's first time in front of such a crowd as well. There's that that has to be factored into this. Yesterday's game's all over in the player room. What was your first time like in front of uh, a big audience? Well, my first time. No, <laughs> no uh, I think I believe it was here last year actually when we played NIP that I felt that that real energy. Um, Dreamhack obviously for the first major was a massive tournament with a huge crowd. We made the the semis there, um, but it's definitely electric and it, it gives you energy. It almost 
makes you a little bit nervous, but it, it kind of wears off after a couple rounds. Grenade dropped on the head of... Uh, goes without... Pasher, it's almost effortless at this point! Virtus Pro just hunting down the Brazilians now. Frag after frag. And it is Bolts with 40 points of health up against 5. And we will see a timeout from Keed. I'm going to ask you the exact same question that happens every timeout. What do you expect uh, Keed to be changing during this timeout? What will Peter be saying? Well, it looks like both of the rounds they've won so far, the pistol and that gun round, both involved the B-bomb site. I'd be really shocked if after this timeout we don't see them somehow use the B-bomb site more than they have other than those two rounds. Because other than those two rounds and the, the one eco round that we saw Snacks and Neo hold down, we really haven't seen them gone back over there. They keep trying to do these A hits and their default at mid. And Virtus Pro is just doing an excellent job rotating around and not even allowing them to breathe when they take middle, actually. They're, they're taking the fights in middle itself. They're not letting them get that connector control, which is really what what Keed thrives on on this map, is getting that connector control and really owning the map, uh, the whole middle portion of the map, getting in the, the window room, the ladder room. They've never been able to do any of that so far. Now, momentum, what part does that play in it? Yesterday in your game on CT side, Virtus Pro put up a, a huge chunk of rounds. Does it drain you? Can you stop that? Or is every round just as important as last? Can you isolate round by round? Well, it kind of depends on the vibe you're getting from the rounds themselves. Yesterday against Virtus Pro, we all felt like the rounds were so close. We, I looked at the scoreboard after the match, and it looked like we killed three, about six rounds in a row in the early part of the, the match. And we just couldn't win any of those 3v3s and 2v2s that we were in. Um, versus this, versus right now, versus um, Keed. These rounds, they're not that close. So I, I, I'm scared for their mentality right now. Because they really need to keep their heads up. If they're, if, and try to exit this half with about four to five rounds. I know the CT side's great. I've played against it in boot camp before when we played them at ClutchCon. They like to double and triple up, actually. And that kind of stuff, Virtus Pro could have a lot of problems with. So it's really important that they finish out this with four or five rounds. A See what they can muster. It'll be a first frag going in the way of Fallen. Snacks then quickly avenges, but through the smoke will come some more of those key players as they look to get in towards that B site. Maybe sneak in a bomb if they can. And that was just a brilliant play by Snacks. Just really abusing the smoke and the flashes of the game. So it's just such knowledge right there, pushing through that smoke right as the T's run past him, singling out that one guy. Steel both having to take on the AWP on the other side is that it is was Neo who was uh, rattling off those shots and Viali will finish off the job. Steel goes down. Virtus Pro, well, exactly as you called it, by the way. You were not surprised to see a B push coming straight after the pause. Yeah, but I, I would really like to see it on a gun round. Um, I know they have B executes, and look, they've actually elected a double op, so that, that's how they're going to try to change the pace here, is they're going to have an extra op in their setup here. One might go towards B, maybe for a pick up there. This guy looks like he's just going to run up mid, CQK. We do have a couple guys working towards B, maybe to underpass. Yeah. But it's near that they'll have to challenge with that AWP, as well as Pasha. I love how Virtus Pro is playing up in the site now. They're completely changing their setup. Pasha opping in the site, Bialy in the site, pass close ramp. It's like every time Keith thinks of something, Virtus Pro does something completely opposite that they haven't done throughout the whole entire match. And who is it calling that? Is that, is that the addition of Kubon, or is that taking stress off Taz, or is it still Taz making these judgment calls? I think Taz is still making these judgment calls. Something I noticed Kubon helping a lot with was smoke timing. So when we played them on Inferno, they would quad smoke banana. Um, basically, they would just keep smoking and smoking and smoking. They wouldn't even use smokes at the A-bomb site because they would have four guys there. So Kubon helps with that kind of stuff, timings and rotations. Um, but as far as like setups, I believe Taz is still calling that kind of stuff. ZQK dropped on the other side by the AWP. Oh, Neo. Virus got himself into a lovely position here looking to take on Taz, and that was one of those shots he just had to hit to open up the site for his teammates. He will get there in the end with the help of his teammate. Steel has a frag onto Snacks as well. 
and momentarily they were level on men, but they lose fur to Neo's AWP. And they have a health disadvantage on Fallen as well. As Fallen does get one frag before going down in the end. And Virtus Pro do get their 11. And that was actually a very good round by Keed. They controlled the map, they got middle, they got in the window room, there were A ramp, there were holes. They had a full split going on A, um, just for kind of missed that kill, and that happens sometimes. Unfortunately, can't hit all the shots, and strategically they were in a good spot there, in my eyes. Well, here we go um, with Virtus Pro's steam train just rolling through Keed at this moment in time. As a commentator, we look for the, the glimmer of hope. We look for the storyline to build. But for Keed at the moment, it's hard to find that. I'm just envisioning all those Virtus Plow gifts in my head right now that I've seen on Reddit. Just the Plow truck coming through. Let's bring back bad memories. <laughs> yes, it does. Ooh, bolts with a head on to Bialy as that Pasha will look to cover the gap. Fallen with the second as Taz goes down. And no sooner do we start riding their obituary to key to remind us exactly why they're in this quarterfinal. Neo will stop the rot. It's he and Snacks that must hold on to this round for Virtus Pro as they begin to look to recover the A site. Bolts will stop them. And now Neo is one on four. And he is going to run the gauntlet to no avail. Virtus Pro dropped their first round in a while and Keed have their third on the board with one to go. Good round right there by Keed. Just a solid A execute. Bolt obviously opening up with that huge headshot on, on CT spawn, just two bolting Bialy. And uh, you saw uh, fallen stats pop up from uh, ClutchCon there. What do you make of the uh, those numbers that uh, Keith had? When they were Kabam at ClutchCon, what did you learn from them at that point? Did you come out of that thinking, well, I actually fear this team that could go somewhere? Uh, I, I definitely feared them after Aspen. Uh, I knew that they obviously had a vast array of tactics on a lot of maps. They still needed work on certain maps, is what I learned at ClutchCon. Um, they had a really tough time against Fnatic on Overpass. I actually think they didn't win a single round in that match. So I know they are weaker on some maps, and I, I, I almost guarantee this boot camp they've spent here um, in Europe has helped tremendously. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they've learned on Overpass, to be honest, in this, in this next map. But looking at this map, I mean, it's still clear that they're a great st strategic team. As now fires off as the Molotov will come in, waiting for him, and it's that smoker's. We haven't seen uh, much of the orc from QK as he will has gone up against two of the best orpers in the game, so it's a hard ask, and Pasha just pokes out and picks him off. This time with the M4. Still have fallen lurking in the middle. It's really important that he gets a kill here. Ooh, There's lurking. that commentator's curse. Lurking the fringe of that smoke. Now Bialy looking to stop any entry on towards the A site. Neo helps him out, picks up the frag onto Fur. And now we're down to just Steel and Bolts up against four. Bolts walking a long way. And is that bomb that can to go down from Steel? It was Bialy who stopped him. Collecting the bomb is Bolts, but he's walking straight into Neo's trap. And the half will finish 12-3. Virtus Pro looking very, very strong. Yeah, and crowd heavily favoring Virtus Pro right now. The momentum is building, and Keith's definitely going to have to win this pistol round if they're looking to come back this half. Let's not forget the great story behind this Keith side. Uh, once they got the opportunity to come to Katowice, so they asked the community to help them. People donated to help get them uh, all the way over to uh, to Poland for this tournament. A, a real positive story that I can personally empathize with from other games. It's you know, something that's a bright light in the gaming industry. Yeah, and I think that people can relate with them on a personal level. They're really, really nice guys to hang out with, chat with, they'll laugh, they'll joke with you. Um, and I think the community could really get behind that, and they can really just relate to them as gamers. We're almost getting a little too soft. I'm tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> my, makeup, always... my makeup, it's rolling down my, my cheek. I always knew you were an emotional guy, Sean. Now we're talking about Taz and, uh, and the help that Kuban's offered. You as the in-game leader, how do you find the need for help? Because we've seen this, uh, this you know, role over the past, I guess, 12 months of ex-pros, you know, relatively recent ex-pros moving into the role of, uh, of coach uh, to help out the in-game leader and free him up, free his mind up. What are your thoughts on that? It's definitely a lot of time um, between like demo watching and really modeling for future strats and stuff like that. It's one of the main reasons why I have 
trouble developing like a solid stream schedule and things like that, which would be fun, obviously. And yes, I'd love you to stream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's it's hard to mix the two and be able to create strats while watching demos, looking at opponents, and looking forward to the future of the team. So it, it's a big time drain, and that's why coaches are so big right now in CSGO, is because it really allows the fifth player to focus on their game, and um, it, bringing Kubin in could, have, could be great things right now for Verse Pro, and we're seeing that right now. Can you find, you know, in the Cloud9 setup, is there, a, is there a, a, what does the role of a coach do in Cloud9 right now? Um, I, I would probably have them help a lot with just sitting behind us and um, really like how like how Cubans used and just tell people when to smoke, what what's being watched, and because um, a lot of times you'll find yourself in a situation where two people are watching angles that really don't work together. So that that's something that a coach can really point and help on a lot, and just saying that one time will, will remedy that in the future all the time. I come back to you at the end of this round with this question. Who's your dream coach? <laughs> Get pick, gets picked off there, and Keed once again start off with the opening frag, and they'll need to take more than just that if they want to claw their way back into this on the CT side. Bolts is the other man tasked with holding off this A push, which Fallen will have to come in and help with. Quick smoke and bomb plant going in as Bialy gets in, and somehow gets out with his life with just two points of health. Steel sees to him, Snacks goes down, and despite that bomb plant, there are but two players left alive who don't have 100 points of health between them to hold on. One of those is Taz, though. Bolton's AQ both go down. Taz going mental with the help of Neo, and now Neo versus Fallen and Steel to win the round. No. Steel gets there, and Keed win their second pistol round. Awesome hold there by Keed, and really fighting off that kind of <laughs> resilience from Taz with that Tech 9, just running around the site, just destroying everyone in his sights. So good job by Keed, keeping it together there and rebounding that round. Now to the question I pose, who's your dream coach? Does it have to be like an inactive player or an active player? Whichever you want. If you could pick one player in the world, uh, former or past, that you could just put behind you in games. I would love to get someone from the source scene. So if I, if I had to pick someone from the, the current scene right now, I would go with someone like Existence because I love his style of calling, how he mixes executes in, and particularly how he uses defaults across maps a lot, which is kind of what we do a lot. So I would love to l just know the intricacies behind the stuff Existence calls. Well, there you go, Existence. If you're watching, somebody loves you. 12-4. Keyed with the weapon advantage and the glimmer of hope that they're going to need. They're going to need to pull out the CT side of their lives if they want to uh, claim this first map. But it is doable. It certainly is, and this is the round where it starts for Keyed. Not losing this eco means everything to them. And here we go, the nades rain in on the A site. Curtis Pro look to follow them in with bodies. It's Fur and that Pamas that will see action first. Taz will stop him as he drops down and 180 headshots him. Now pushes on for more. Bialy will steal that one off his toes and Curtis Pro charge into the A-bomb site and put their name right down on that bomb. And it is Fallen who will take a lot of damage. Finally we have someone on the board for them as uh, It'll be Snacks that's picked off by Steel. But in the meantime, he and Pasha have done the damage, and Steel is one on three. 24 and six on two players there, but a hell of an ask for Steel, who is clearing the side and doesn't have long to get the defuse either, and won't. He looks to escape and looks to hunt down, perhaps, Neo. But uh, won't get that either. Invertus Pro will be able to, again, convert that pistol round loss into a one-all in the second half. And that right there, that round just shows why Virtus Pro is so brilliant on this map. They take something that's so standard as an A execute right there. It just looks like a normal A execute. Taz exits the halls, gets that kill. He somehow has a smoke still, and they coordinate it to, so that way he smokes center sight after he's already dropped out, so that way the bomb can be planted without worrying about dying from a guy running through the connector smoke and things like that. Those little twerks or tweaks in, in in normal strats, or what wins versus Pro these Mirage matches. Snax opens up the fragging and Spur that goes down. And uh, Taz looks for a second. I think it's uh, Boltz who's on the other side there with the help of Steel, and they'll try to create some form of a sandwich. 
flying in white. Remember, the steel does have that M4 as well. Not anymore! And but just pro. Well, just going through the motions at this point. Fallen does pick up a nice frag onto Snacks and a second onto Pasha before his nade strikes from beyond the grave. And that'll be that. It is 14. They are two away from picking up map one. And just great movement right here by Snacks. Knowing to jump on this box, peek that angle. Completely off probably the position that Steel was holding. And then crouch slide away. We call that the Shoxy slide. The Shoxy slide. <laughs> So we already have two of our semi-finalists. They are Fnatic and Envy and Lotus Pro looking to put their name amongst that group. And this is where Virtus Pro is at their most dangerous. When they're just no respecting you at 14-4 and just running up their ramp. A little bit of respect shown back to Taz there with that M4 headshot reminding exactly what Keed are capable of. And Fur in the FAMAS do exactly that onto Bialy. And those beautiful biceps and that AWP clean out the site. 15 for 11 map points. The momentum cannot be stopped, Stu. And let's take a look at that again from Pasha and that AWP. First one, and then two. Yes. From your perspective now, I mean, how do you motivate yourself for map number two? They've got to go and do this all over again on overpass, a map that, well, they're not known for. Yeah, so they're going to have a really tough time on overpass, but the one thing they have going for them is they're going to start CT, I believe. So if they can string together pistol, get that first gun round, they can really control the economy of the first half and get things going in their favor. One thing you'll find that uh, a lot of the teams from outside Europe and the U.S. have is that have against them is that getting games on uh, both Cobble and Overpass is challenging for them in their local communities. And that's exactly what Keith said before this game. They're the two maps we don't really want to be playing. Exactly. And that's something that people don't realize. Um, I was talking to Anders about that. So I read a lot of comments like, oh, they're boot camping and they should have all these set strats on Overpass. And we have a lot of strats on Overpass. But when you boot camp, you realize certain strats just don't work in Europe. Um, so we realized that really fast, that a lot of things we theoried up in America just wouldn't work. We made some changes on the fly. But Overpass is just one of seven maps, and we only had seven days to boot camp. Probably about seven scrims total on Overpass, because we had to spread out across all the maps. Um, it's just, it's not enough, and I, I hope it is enough for Kaboom. And I hope the things that they, they created are, are just solid enough to take out Virtus Pro. Well, you know the solution, Sean. Move to Europe. <laughs> I got a spare room. We'll put Jordan in with uh, with D-Man. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll make. We'll get him over here somewhere. All Jordan needs is a doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>